Hello everyone, welcome back again. My name is Jesse and in this wonderful tutorial, we're trying to see how to summarize a text or a document using Julia. So let's see how to do that. So there are two main methods of summarization. We have extractive and an abstractive, right? So in this particular tutorial, we're trying to see how to build a simple extractive format of summarization using Julia. So the main idea is that we need to first of all pr process our text, right? By removing stop words, punctuations, putting them all in the same case, right? Then we need to build a word frequency table by tokenizing all the words in a sentence, then we want to count the number of words that okay in each sentence and then score them, right? To build our sentence score, we want to find the largest score and then rate them by joining them together. That's the basic idea about building a test summarizer in this particular part, which is usually extractive. Now let's see what you do analyze. So this is a particular test to be analyzing. So if you go to this particular test we have, so that's giving us an error, right? Because of uh, the dollar sign. In Julia, this is a String interpolation. So to solve this particular issue, we just go to row. That is one nice thing about Julia. So row, and it's going to solve it perfectly, right? Bringing the row here. Now this is a test we are going to summarize. So the basic idea is that first of all, we need to be able to get a means of removing all the stop words. So we need a list of stop words, right? And then a list of all punctuations. But we will not be working in punctuations now. We just working with stop words. Then we need to be able to tokenize them. So there are two main stuff. So this is a list of all the stop words. From Julia, so I built a set of all the stop words in that we need, right? The basic stop words can even add your own, like L O L, -L -O, right? Now let's work with our tokens. So for our tokens, tokenization, we need we need two aspects. We need to be able to do word tokens and then sentence tokens. So the first one is that we need a package called tokenizer. So it's going to be using PKG. As in case you are working with Jupyter Notebook, then just go with pkg.add. Then the name of the package is going to be our word tokenizer. Tokenizer, sorry, that's a package, right? You can use this particular method, or you can use this particular the pkg string. So pkg, then add word tokenizers. Right? So you can use any of them to install it. Right? So I've already installed the package already, so just move straight up to it. So we're going to be using our word tokens, tokenizers. So this particular package gives us the option of doing a lot of things. So one of the things it gives us to do is that it allows us to be able to tokenize words. So let's call it as word tokens. So for the word tokens, we are, we, this is going to be tokenize our particular document. So docs, right? So it's going to tokenize them for which is quite plenty. And it's 399 tokens. You are able to see how to tokenize it. So the next thing we need to do is that we need to find our sentence tokens. So it's going to be the same thing. So split sentences, then my documents that I have for my test. So it's about 24 different sentences. Very interesting. Now the next thing we need to do is to build a word frequency table for this particular tokens and then for our split sentence for our sentence tokens. So I've copied this particular function so that I'll explain this so that it becomes faster. Perfect. So this is going to be a simple function we are building. Then we're going to put a dictionary, right, to store all our words, our tokens, and then their keys. Perfect. So let's see how to do that. So we're going to be we're going to look through our tokenized words. So for word in tokens, tokenize those of the document. Then you're going to see if the word is a stop word, don't add it. But if the word is not a stop word, add it, right? Because the more stop words they are, the more you're going to affect the reading. So you're just going to remove all the stop words or normalize the stop words. So this is how to do not in. In most programming language like Python, you can just go not in, right? But in Julia, you can just put it straight away with the not in, right? Then you bring the backslash, then tab. So tab is going to convert it to the not in symbol or the not an element symbol, right? So if the word is not an element of stop words, and if the word is not an element of the keys of that particular dictionary, add it. Else, don't add it. That's the basic idea about it. So if it's repeated, you just omit it. If not repeated, just add it. That's the basic idea. Now after that, you need to build a word frequency table. So we are going to build a word frequency table for that. So let me show you what I mean by that. So let's copy this one here, right? And then let me show you the result of this particular function, which we have here. So let me show you. So if I paste this here, so that build a word frequency. So word frequency. Perfect. So that it has built a simple word frequency of one, 
one for one, apple, fight, help, value, heavyweight, all of these things, right? So we need to find the maximum number of tokens, right? We need to find a proper ratio of them. So that is the next option. Number. So that is the next option, right? So we need to find the maximum value here. So we're going to find maximum of all the words that we have gotten above, above these particular words here. Then we need to find a proper word frequency, right? So the maximum value is going to give us a, a value of maybe 28. Then for word in keys of that particular word, we're going to find the maximum value of it. So let's try that one also. Put it here so that you see what I mean by that. Perfect. So if I go back to our maximum frequency, which we had, it's going to give us as 28 or something. Or it's 14, right? Oh, okay. 14 because of the test. Then if I go back to my red frequency that I had again, it's going to change it from the previous one that we had to fractions, right? Into ratios. So you see that this is 0 0.4. Here it was 1. Right? So that is the basic, the essence of finding the maximum value so that we don't have a lot of don't have a lot of confusion. Perfect. So the next thing we need to do is that we need to be able to build a sentence tokenizer with what we did previously, build a dictionary, and then look through each and every sentence look through each and every word of every sentence and then find a dictionary find a word frequency for that particular word comparing it to the sentence right so that's the basic idea and you're going to be, so this one is going to be the highest length of it, it can be 20 it can be 40 it can be anybody so you're going to find the if the sentence is not inside a particular key you store it just like we did in a previous aspect here this is exactly the same thing we are doing here so let's try it and see, right? So let's copy this one here so that we see what we are doing step by step. If I run this here and I check for the sentence, score here, sentence. So that now it has given us a sentence for each and every individual sentence. So but to 1.7. So we're going to find the largest score. Here. One is two here. One is two, another one is one, another one is zero. So two. we are going to find the scores of each and every sentence. The next thing we need to do is that we need to be able to find the highest score and reach them more because the highest score means that it's very, very important. Okay. That is where we go with our particular sentence score. So in this particular option, find the largest score. We can just use the n largest from data structures package, or we can just use the normal sort function. So we're going to collect all the values. And all the keys together, right? So we are what you are working on is the values, not the keys. We are using the values rather, not the keys, right? And then we're going to build a collection of them, right? To convert them from dictionary to tuple and then to list, we're going to sort them out in the reverse order. So the reverse is going to sort them from the highest to the lowest. So after sorting them out, we're going to build a list comprehension to get only the values, not the keys, right? To get only the, the keys, not the values, to get only these words. Right, not these ones. Right, that is the basic idea about to get these words rather, not these ones. Perfect. So we have them to put that. Then later we're going to join them together using the join function. So let's run this particular stuff we have. So we are going to create a simple function. So let's try it again. So test. We have this our particular document here. We're going to copy this our doc document so that we see the difference between it. It is a very huge sentence, right? I want to tokenize it. It's going to be test, not tokenize, but summarize. Summary. Summarize that, then I'm going to apply in my docs. Perfect. So that, 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 that's that change the sentence two times. So we have we are currently experiencing another gold rush, but here Google, Amazon, Microsoft, IBM are heavy with so that summarize the test in a very simple and concise way for us. So that's how to build a simple test simulation. So in a nutshell, the basic idea is that Going to build a dictionary, right? You're going to tokenize each and every word and then compare it with the stop words. Then you're going to find the maximum frequency of the words, then build a sentence tokenize tokenize or tokenize all the sentence, then tokenize the individual words inside the sentence, then compare it with the score, right? And that's going to find the highest score based on the values, then join them together. That's a big idea about it. Now let's try and see how to use this one particular stuff to build it in a simple package. So I'm just going to copy this particular function we have here and then create a simple stuff. So I'm just going to go to this here and let's start. 
So to create a package, it's quite simple. Let's go to go with our Julia, start our Julia script, Julia repo. Then I'm just going to switch to my package mode going using this particular stuff here. Using this particular stuff here. Then I'm going to add it, create my particular package. So it's going to be generate. Sorry, generate the name of package is test summarizer. That's perfect. So it's going to generate that particular package for us. So perfect. So it's select created a project.toml file and then a source file with this particular stuff. So let's check that. You have my test file, and inside you have a source file with something here, right? And then here we also have the toml file. So inside my source file, if I go straight here and I add it, open sublime, so this is the name of the particular package. Here. Right, the name of the particular file, which is this file that we are having here. Perfect. So there's something here which is this. So this is where I'm going to paste in all my stuff. So let me shift here to CD into my test summarizer. Perfect. Right, so I'm already here. So if I go back to my tree here, you're going to see our source file, right? So let me add another package to this. So I'm going to activate it by going to the package mode and activate. Dot. It's going to activate the test summarizer. So, so it has activated a particular package for us, right? Test summarizer package. So I can add another package, which is add where tokenizers because that's the package you'll be using. It's going to add this word tokenizer to my Tomo file. Perfect. So it has added a word tokenizer package. So if I go back to my file source file here and I go to here, you see that you have a manifest Tomo file. The project of Tomo file. So let's open this manifest Tomo file. Inside you have all the dependencies, all the things that this particular package require, right? All of it, including the one we installed, the web tokenizer. The same way, if I go check the Tomo file, project Tomo file, right? Tomo means Tom's obvious maker. So we have the name of the package. We have the name of the package, the summarizer, right? That is the name of this particular package. Then, then the author, which is me, so I can change it to my name. So it can be Jesse K. Kyrus, right? Then a version. So in case you want to change the version, let's put the version here. And the dependencies that we added here, I think please see a very nice format. So let's save this and then let's close it. So the next thing we need to do is be able to put in our function. So let me copy and paste our, my function from here. So this is the function that we're working with, right? So copy this particular function and then paste it here. Perfect. So we have need to paste our particular function here. So this function required another package called the way tokenizer. So let's import that one. So using way tokenizer tokenizers. Then also there was also stop way. So we need to indicate the stop way. So the stop way is going to be here. So we can copy the stop ways from our script with the one we worked on. It is all these particular stop ways. Right, so let's paste it here. Perfect. So we have been able to find our way to neither and then our software so that there's not going to give us any error. Now we need to be able to export this particular stuff. So let's export it. So we're going to export our test summarizer so that we don't need to be calling this particular stuff. So when we're exporting this function, we can be able to use this function without calling the full name for it. Right. Now let's add some documentation to it. To, to add documentation, you just go with the dot string of this. Three, yeah. Now let's go on with this. So this has going to be so it's going to be our test summarizer, then dots abstract string, right? So that is the usage. So let's go with the usage. So let's go to the usage. It's going to be our test summarizer, then your string. So your string or your document or whatever. Then I can just put another stuff for our documentation to return a summary of documents using as an extractive summary technique, something like that. Take okay, so I save it. Then now we're going to build a simple package. Now, because we're already here. I shift back to the previous one that we have, right? I go with the ls 
we have it here so let's move into this particular folder so let's move into the folder by going back to the shell so cd to my src then i'll cut the particular file that we have which is exactly what we have in a very nice format now let's work on it so to work on it i just go with being simple there are two meters i just go straight away and then use the include then the name of the package which is test so that's how to work with it now it has been included into it so if i go with var info of this my particular stuff that i had it's going to list the particular function which we have which is the test summary as well as the name of the module for us perfect it is very interesting now i can use it straight away by going with the normal way of test summarizer dot test summarizer and i'm going to supply the particular document i want to work with so let's paste in a particular document right so i'm just going to paste in my test so it does going to be a row then let's so now we have our test here so now let's see how to analyze it so test summary dot our test summary then I'm going to pass in my document, right? So dots would summarize it perfectly for us without any issues. Perfect. So that that summarize our test in a simple way. So that's how to work with test summarization. How to summarize your test from start, right? From start of building the particular package and then building an individual model. To allow it to work so thank you for watching and then please don't forget to subscribe the code will be below you can also check the links so there are some in some cases you can also actually add test to it right you can also add test you will learn about that later so thank you and stay blessed